Chepstow is a town steeped in history. Roman, Norman, English, Welsh. It's a border town with plenty to say. It flourished in the Middle Ages. It was outside the, the realm of the, of the Kingdom of England because it was governed by the, the Earl of Hereford, one of the martial lords, who could set his own taxes. So it became an important centre for bringing in wine from places like France and, and Spain. And also being at the centre of a very heavily wooded area, the, the, the Forest of Dean and the Wye Valley, it became really important for the, the export of timber. And when it came to the Napoleonic Wars at the end of the 18th century and start of the 19th, half of all the timber that was used by the British Navy came through Chepstow. And, you know, for, for a time it was, it was an important industrial centre as well as being a, being a thriving market town. One of the things I like about this place is the gatehouse. Yes, well, of course, Chepstow was a walled town and the... The lord of the, of, of the town wanted to only allow people in, into his market. There's a huge market here, and it would only allow people into the market by paying a tax. The only way of doing that was to build, build the wall and put the gatehouse here. All the traffic um, into the town had to come through this one entrance. But then, of course, as the centuries went on, it became an important um, thoroughfare, the highway for traffic between South Wales and England generally. And right up to the time the Seven Bridge, first Seven Bridge was built in the, in the 1960s, all the traffic between uh, Gloucestershire, including the Seven Ferry at, at Beechley, and South Wales, all the traffic had to pass through this one gatehouse. You can see it's very narrow. Um, during the Second World War, when the Americans were, were here, they wanted to lock it down so they could take their... Um, there onwards through. Luckily that wasn't done, so we still have the gatehouse here today. So what does it mean to be in a border town? Yeah, well the, the border between England and Wales was really established by Athelstan in the in the tenth century and it's always been a border town. Like uh, uh, the you know trade trade took place between the, the, the Welsh and the and, and the Saxons going back, you know, millennia. Until the last 50 years or so, there were question marks about whether Chepstow and whether Monmouthshire was part of Wales and England. Obviously, Welsh people thought it was in Wales. Legally, it's more dubious. But um, Chepstow is very much part of Wales now, albeit with very close links with England and with the area just over the other side of the river. The border lies in the shadow of lovely Chepstow Castle and is marked by this structure of beauty, the Iron Bridge. Built in 1816, it entrances John Burroughs. There are a number of border crossings over rivers between England and Wales, but this in my mind is, is the best is the best one. The, I mean, there are beautiful ones like the Seven Bridge that cro cross over, and there are smaller bridges further up the River Wye and some in North Wales, but this bridge just has everything. It's the right sort of size. You can walk across easily into England or into back into Wales. It's got beauty, it's got history, it's got world significance. It really is a tremendous bridge, this. John became interested in the bridge when he started to study the tides that flow beneath it. It's got the second highest tidal range in the world. Now the only higher tidal range in the world is in a remote part of Canada. There aren't any bridges over that water. So this bridge actually bridges the highest tides in the world because there is no bridge that uh, um, bridges greater tides. The, the water will go through the ironwork of the bridge at a very high tide and it will sink down uh, to a small stream which will be uh, 18 metres below the balustrade on the, on, the, on the bridge. It's a huge tidal range and it's also the fastest rising tide in the world because it comes in in about uh, well, it's 13, 14 metres, 44 feet in four hours. Uh, and, and as far as I'm aware there's nowhere else in the world where it rises that fast, not even out in the seven. So with its beauty and history why isn't Chepstow's Iron Bridge better known? Well, there's several reasons for that. First of all, the person who built it, John Erpeth Thrastrick, was quite a secretive person. And he, there are no photographs of him, even though he was in the photograph age. 
but also the largest iron um, road bridge in the world was opened in London three months before this bridge opened. So all the journalists thought, oh well, we don't need to go down to Chepstow. Although this bridge, when it opened, was the third largest iron arch road bridge in the world. There was one in London, which is the uh, original Vauxhall Bridge, not the one that's there now, but the one that was there before. There was a bridge in Paris, the Austerlitz Bridge in Paris, and the third largest in the world was this bridge at Chepstow when it opened. Um, and now all those other bridges have gone. Of the top ten largest iron arch bridges built before 1820, this is the only one surviving. For John, the bridge is deserving of worldwide recognition. The bridges of Wales uh, are some of the best in the world. The Pont of the Aqueduct is already a, um, uh, a World Heritage Site. Iron Bridge in England is already a World Heritage Site. Um, this also deserves it. Whether we could do it s singly just for this bridge or whether we would link it to um, Brunel's Railway Bridge, which is around the corner from uh, here in Chepstow, to the um, uh, suspension bridge in Bristol and perhaps the Seven Bridge itself as a grouping, and the Newport Transporter Bridge, perhaps a grouping of unusual uh, world, you know, distinctive bridges, that might make a World Heritage collection. We we've got to look into how to actually do it, but certainly the bridges of Wales, there are tr tremendous ones of great world significance, and this is one of them. I just think it's absolutely phenomenal bridge, and I'd like as many people to know about it as possible, including the whole world. The campaign to recognise the special status of this wonderful structure continues.